This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go to if you want to set up your own slick looking website or online store. So today we are looking at the new iPhone 12 Pro Max here with Faisal. Hey, and I'm vlogging this on my phone. In fact, I don't need you guys. I can just film everything on my iPhone, socially distanced, of course. There we are. 12 Pro Max, it's Max by name and Max more Maxer in sensor size than before, thus should provide Maxer images and videos. No, let's see. So what is the main difference then in terms of this camera and that camera? Um, is the sensor size? Sensor size, uh, it's got a LiDAR scanner for uh, night portrait mode. Okay, not, not enough nightness here right now. I do like the photos from my phone. They do Good come up. out very nice, I'll admit. And the focal lengths are exactly the same, right? More or less, yeah, I'd say so. I don't think the focal length has changed that much. It's just more the um, technical bits inside. One of the clever things with the iPhone camera is that, in terms of dynamic range, it looks pretty good because, look at that, high dynamic range. Should be backlit to buggery right there. A bit flaring there. That's all good. What do you think of that? Oh, portrait. They actually look pretty much the same. Both deal backlit well by bumping up the details in the shadows nicely. Bokeh is quite natural on the new one too, which has gained a bit of extra focal length. 65mm quiv versus 52mm at the longest, but slightly slower aperture speed of f2.2 versus f2. But it also flares and ghosts more. It's practically the same shot there. More or less, yeah. Yours has got nicer colours though. I don't know if you use a different lighting for that. No. Well, mine's just portrait mode. It's, it was taken by me. That's why it looks better. Okay. All right, but no matter who has the iPhone 12, I think the 12 has the better ergonomics. I mean, the thing is, this is rounded on the side, which is, I always feel like it's, it's about to slip out of my hands because it's very slippery. Yeah, and you don't have a case either. I don't have a case, no. But the new iPhone is squared, which I think is a better grip. Well, this one, it's, uh, even though this is the smaller one, it still feels too slippery. That's why I wrap my hand right around it like this. And then I just press the shutter button like that. And when it's that one. slippery and the, the button on the screen is there, yeah. it always feels like it's about to drop. Can I try it on your phone? And then you try it on mine. Even though this is a bigger phone, the squared edges, when you're holding like this, it feels, it feels more secure. You can grip it a lot firmer. And because the shutter button is, is there's a bit more space inwards from the outside of the phone, which means you don't have to have your, your hand gripped right at the bottom of the screen. I mean, the, of the phone. You can have your hand a bit further up, so it's, it's a better grip. Better in hand, but is one of them a bit handier in terms of performance? One, two, three. In terms of speed, the shutter response, they both feel quite similar. It's kind of the same, isn't it? Yeah. One, two, three. In terms of speed, the shutter response, they both feel quite similar. It's kind of the same, isn't it? Yeah. Shutter response is, is quite good. I mean, for street photography, quick enough, right? Definitely fast yeah? enough for me. 12 Pro Max seems to deal with bringing back the details and highlights better. Just look around the sun on the iPhone 11. It doesn't seem to have blended in well with the rest of the image. Well, there's no surprise for there to be improvements over the 11 for photos, but I'm more interested in whether it can get any closer to something with a bigger sensor. Now, guess what I got in the recent Black Friday deals? This, the Sony ZV-1. I know I said that given the choice of this and the G100, I'll go for this. I mean, given the choice of G100 or ZV-1, I would go for the ZV-1. Of course. But given the choice of ZV-1 or something else, I'll go for something else. <laughs> there wasn't something else, so I got this. 100 pounds off. Compact camera for vlogging, takes stills as well. Quickly powers on like that, extends 24 to something, 70 probably, can't remember, don't care. But I don't use the telly. And um, Sony, Sony Color Science mm. has been improved. Okay, let's not pretend I've always wanted a ZV-1. Any regret? Well, I've always had that slight doubt when I buy a new camera, but part of me is thinking that I should have just got the iPhone 12 Pro Max, that's for sure. So Faisal's snapping away with his iPhone 12 Pro Max. Oh, it tells me it's backlight. This auto, this auto mode is clever. Although it just now said your landscape. 
so maybe not that clever. And the photos from the iPhone aren't making those doubts disappear. They do look good. They seem to have a way of keeping more detail in those highlights well for a phone. But there is something about the ZV-1 shot that feels better. And I think I prefer the Sony skin colours. It's quite impressive how much detail you can eke out from those raw files. Push and pull those sliders around and you can get back information that seemingly wasn't there without any ill effects. The image quality is decent, again when not looking close up. Cropping in tight reveals some mushy bits, the ultra wide having soft corners. I think the standard lens has the best image quality all around with more even performance across the frame. In other words, compact cameras have nothing to worry about yet. Background defocus. Just like the iPhone, you can make the background blurry, bokehified, to make it like a bigger sensor camera. This has got defocus control. Hate having to access the phone with a mask. Okay, here we go. Defocus control. Clear. Defocus. It's very light on the defocus with the ZV-1 and doesn't keep the details in the highlights as well as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but it depends which one you prefer. When you put them side by side, the iPhone's photo looks almost a bit too overdone. He's busy tweeting over there. You can't do that with the Sony ZV-1. He is obviously doing all that while standing in the road, which is uh, potentially dangerous. Only if someone decides to park a bike in him. Anyway, it's not just a sensor size that increases, but improves stabilization too. Plus now it's got IBIS. I mean, well, it's got uh, sensor shift IBIS. Yep, and image stabilization too. Yeah. I mean, uh, take some video now. The handheld shot looks mighty stable. Okay, recording. I use active steady shot on the ZV-1. I don't think Sony has the best stabilization around, although it's coping fairly well for a walking shot. You can still see the shakes and sometimes it tries to compensate too much, but the iPhone 12 Pro Max, although not perfect either, is much more stable, something you might want to think about if you're vlogging. Oddly, the flaring and ghosting is quite noticeable. It seems like it's moving along with the sensor shift stabilization. At night, the ghosting with lights is quite annoying actually. But this is obviously good for vlogging as well, which is why, partly why I bought it. Although it's not quite wide enough. Oh, for fuck's sake. Getting a phone call now. You, yeah, you don't get a phone call in your ZV-1. Uh, I'm gonna have to call you back. Like I called them back just to tell them I haven't been in a car crash. Anyway, the one area that ZV-1 and other compacts are gonna find it hard to compete with the iPhone in is vlogging. The stabilization on the 12 Pro Max is so good. On the standard lens or the wide, it's perfect for walking and talking shots. Super smooth. The only thing is, the iPhone 11 is still pretty good too. If you want a vlogging camera, on your phone, what you do is this, video, wide mode, and you get your Apple Watch. You can use this as the screen. The only problem is that you need to do this every time you're vlogging. But that's wide enough, you can hit record. That's, that acts as almost like a tally light. You don't need a tally light, you've got this saying that you're recording. Um, okay, so anyway, I have got the Rode Video Mic Me L, whatever they call it, mounted on the iPhone 11. Not I'm not recording, oh shit, there we are. Well, it says it's recording here. It's not recording. It's, look, what a piece of shit. <laughs> what <laughs> shit, look. Oh, now it's recording, okay. Oh, f***ing technology, Apple. Get yeah, anyway, as good as the 12 Pro Max looks, I think I'm happy with the ZV-1 and iPhone 11 Pro. At least that's what I keep telling myself. We can't beat the, the dynamic range of that. That's fantastic. The stabilization is good as well. With the LiDAR scanner, bigger sensor, however big it is, the iPhone 12 Pro Max is certainly putting out some nice looking low light shots for viewing on phones, not really for pixel peepers. And although I think an iPhone 12 or even 11 with the ultra wide option is all the vlogging setup most people really need, it's making me question whether I need the ZV-1. For stills though, although it is taking the right steps and closing the gap between phones and compacts, the one inch sensor compact does produce finer images, even if the iPhone has clever ways of showing more details and highlights. For now, I can still feel like I've bagged a bargain with a ZV-1. For now.
Oh, and shout out to Squarespace. If you want to set up your own website or online store, just set up your own domain. There's a free 14-day trial and 10% off your first order. Links down below. Why choose Squarespace? Because it's great. It makes setting up a website dead easy and with 24-7 customer service in case you get stuck and you most likely won't. Plus, there's a whole load of beautiful templates to choose from. All you need to do is pick it, you customize it, and your website's been built. Dead easy to do. So yeah, 14-day free trial, 10% off your first order. Links down below. Thanks for watching. See you again. Goodbye.